to into your life. Can you sing it like this? to the house of the Lord. I want you to be a testimony of how God has been good to you. Someone may need to see that in the house. I don't want you to just come and socialize. I want you to come and edify. And then you can say, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord. thanks today in prayer to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in this wonderful morning that we have risen up and we are here in this sanctuary to give you praise and glory. We give you thanks, Father, because we recognize your righteousness, your divine righteousness was imparted to your son, Jesus Christ, who died for all of our sins so that we can come to the altar and praise you for the work that he has done. We are here, Heavenly Father, we are here. We are that new creature, that new image. We are your spiritual work, and we are here to give you glory for the sins and to confess, but to also be transformed because in the power of your faith and in the power of the blood of Jesus, we can do all things because Father God, you are just that. Your power is unlimited. We just have to ask and it will be given to us. So Father, we pray today for all of those who are listening for all those who are here, we pray for those who could not make it. We pray for those who are sick, that this table that you give to us is a special table. We are able to come together as one, worship as one. So Father, thank you. Thank you in the blood of your son, Christ Jesus, that we are renewed, that our minds have been made over, that we have recognized that without you, Father, we are nothing, that we are the new, spirit because as you said in John you must worship me in spirit and in truth so let us always father remember that when we come to your throne to your altar to give of ourselves, that this is what we do we are reminded to worship you in spirit and truth so father thank you for the faith that you give us, that strengthens us because of your unlimited power, that we are here to receive it in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, for all the work he has done for us. Amen.
I hope I'm not taking up too much of your time this morning. But he's worthy to be praised. When you think about the byways and the highways that he brought you over. And when you think about how he didn't have to wake you up this morning. Then you can say, you're worthy. It wasn't that job that paid your bills if you didn't know that by now. Come on, we give you glory. We give you glory. Oh, I wish I could hear you Drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. This is the word of God. May it be a blessing to us all. You may be seated. I woke up this morning with my mind stay. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind stay. You're with your mind. If you're visiting with us for the first time, would you stand wherever you are in this sanctuary? If you're for the amen, they're standing, they're standing. Come on, oh, they're standing. Come on, let's give God some praise. Oh, they're standing all over the want you to know we are peacock proud. I crown thee now. Anybody remember that hymn? He's a sufficient one.
Give Amber a hand. This is one of her solos with me. And the Lord is just blessing her. She's getting better and better. Well, I've got another surprise for you. Enough. 
nothing. Hallelujah, nothing. Come on, let's give God some praise all over this house. Nothing but the blood. Hallelujah. 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 If you would join me in the Gospel of Mark in the 14th chapter. In the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, I want to read the 22nd verse in the King James Version where we find these words. And as they did eat, Jesus took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. For the few moments that are ours this morning, I want you to pray with me from the subject, trust the process. If you're sitting next to somebody, say, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through, but you got to trust the process. That must have been the only wrong neighbor because they didn't even celebrate for you. Look on the other side like you just got out of the dentist chair. Smile real good and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor. Trust the process. Now, come on, give God praise for what's getting ready to happen in this house. God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity to preach your word. God, I have studied, but I need your strength. I have prepared, but I need your power. I'm willing and I want to, but only you can make me able. Lord, take this sanctuary right now. Make it into your chemical laboratory of redemption so that we might come forth with power and anointing. That we might come forth saying, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Spirit of the living God, you kept us yesterday, but now we need a fresh touch. Come on, Holy Ghost and have your way right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen. amen. Trust the process. It is unfortunate 
that we live in a culture that does not appreciate the process. It does not appreciate what it takes to develop people in order that they might be their very best. You do know that no one starts out ready for prime time. No one just comes on the scene and is already ready, prepared, already on par, already in place for the thing that God has for them. If they don't go through a storm, how can they be ready? If they don't shed some midnight tears, how can they be ready? If they don't endure being the center of a gossip circle, how can can they be ready? If they don't go through some sickness, how can they really be ready? In fact, somebody is here today and you are where you are because of what you've come through. You've gotten to the place and the promotion that God had for you, but you had to go through some stuff. I wonder, do I have about six witnesses here? I'll make number seven. Who can say I had to go through some stuff to stand up in here? I had to go through some stuff to clap these hands. I had to go through some stuff to sing some song. I had to go, anybody here, up in here, you can say, I've been through some stuff. That's why I've got what I've got and know what I know. And I'm praising him right now. Be seated. I'm still in the introduction. And so you got to hold on and trust the process. See, you can't do your best in school until you go through the process. You can't do your best on the job until you go through some through the process. You can't understand all that God has for you and is trying to do through you until you go through the process. See, that termination letter, you looking at it wrong. That termination letter can't destroy you. It's just part of the process. That nasty email, it's not designed to destroy you. It's just part of the process. Those things they're saying about you in closed doors, that ain't going to do much for you. It's just part of the process. It cannot destroy you. It cannot deplete you. And it cannot derail you. Not when God is on your side. And I believe there's somebody already feeling this thing. In fact, I'm about to pull out your, I'm about to pull up on your address because you're saying I've been through through some things, but it was because of the process that I am who I am. It's because of the process that God got the glory out of my life. See, that's, and that's where Jesus is in this story. Jesus here in this story, he is sitting with his disciples, and he is in a penultimate moment, in that Jesus is in a room, and they've been together now for three years, and they've done some good work, and Jesus is now ready He's about to go to Calvary and he just demonstrates for them what life is all about when you trust God in the process. But Jesus does something in this chapter that we've seen before. He uses the same phrase that he used when he fed the 5,000. He uses the same words that he used as he reminds them that he's about to go to Calvary. As he reminds them that I'm about to leave you. He says to them, ah, are you got to take the bread you got he if you look at this text this is not the first time that he has said this to us in other words he says you've got to trust the process even when you can't trace the process you've got to trust the process even when you can't behold the process you've got to trust the process even when you don't understand the process you've got to trust the process even while tears are rolling down your face and meeting one another under your chin you've got to trust the process even when it looks like you want to give up give out give over and give you, you've got to trust the process even when you want to walk away you've got to trust the process see he pauses and helps them with this communion experience if you will he takes the bread and after he takes the bread he blesses the bread and once he bless, blesses the bread he breaks the bread and then once he breaks the bread that's when he distributes the bread. This is the same language that he used when he was up on that mountain and fed the 5,000. He's demonstrating it again because he wants us to recognize that whether he's using this for worship or using this for work, God prepares us and God wants us to know that whatever we, are, we go through, if we are in his hands and in, in his service, we've got to go through some things to get what God 
God has for us. And see, God, see, if we never, we never would appreciate what we have if we don't go through the process. I mean, if you just jaywalk through the process, you won't, you won't understand what the process was all about. So God said, you got to go through it if you're going to get to the next level. You got to go through it if you're going to get your next blessing. You got to go through it if you're going to sing your best song. You got to go through it if you're going to, if you're going to pray your best prayer. You got to go through it if you're going to take a licking and keep on ticking. You got to go through it if you're going to climb that mountain. You got to go through it if you're going to tell somebody what God can do. You got to go through it if you're going to tell somebody if you're sick, he's a healer. If you're down, he's a lifter. If you're broke, he's got money. If you're lonely, he's a lover. Yeah, whatever you need, the Lord will supply. And I believe there's somebody up in this sanctuary who can testify that God's been with me. And that's why y'all be seated. I'm still in the introduction. Oh, I feel God up in this place. So he takes the bread. This is this is this sermon is too conspicuous to deny. He takes the bread. He blesses the bread. He breaks the bread and then he passes it out. Don't you miss the process? Because the same thing he does with inanimate objects, he will do with your life if you just trust him. Anybody trust him today? Is there anybody here who can say, I trust in God wherever I may be, upon the land or out on the rolling steep, come what may from day, my heavenly father watches over me. Anybody know he watches over you? He takes the bread. He blesses the bread. And then he breaks the bread. Uh, he takes the bread. He blesses the bread. He, bre he, he breaks the bread, but then he passes it out. This, this, is an in this is an interesting process because after he does all of that, he says, then I'm going to send you forth that you might do my will. He says, after you've been through what you've, going, what you've got to go through, that's when you've got to go out and tell somebody that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I, where would I be? That's when you got to go out and tell somebody uh, that I've got a testimony. If you're looking for a testimony, look at me. If you're looking at a recoverer, somebody who can, who's recovered, look at me. If you're looking for somebody who's redeemed, look at me. If you're looking for somebody who's gotten a second chance, look at me. If you're looking for somebody that God made out of nobody, look at me. If you're looking for somebody who was was tore up from the floor up didn't know if you were gonna get back up but the Lord picked me up the Lord turned me around the Lord placed my feet ha ah, on solid ground you got to go through you got to go through you got to go through the process you got to go through the process but you if if you don't go through the process you won't really recognize what the Lord can do can I get a witness in here well, this is a four-point sermon. This is a four-point sermon. Now, usually y'all kind of fall off on me around point two, but I need you to kick in to second gear when I get to, when I get to the second point because we got four gears today. Y'all going to stay with me? If you're sitting next to somebody, they kind of drowsy today. Lean on them real quick. Say, never, you got to stay with him four points today. You can't, you can't give up on him on that second point. There's four things. There are four things. There are four things that come out of this text. The first thing is that he took the bread. Somebody shout, he took the bread. I'm trying to keep y'all awake. You got three more to go. He took the bread. See, Dr. King, Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King said on one occasion, and I'm paraphrasing somewhat, he said, if you haven't found anything to die for, you haven't found anything to live for. In, in other words, in other words, God does not just call pastors. God calls people on both sides of the chancel rail. God, not everybody is is called to stand in a pulpit but the and some folk who are well let me shut up uh, but anyways anyways uh, there are some people who have to recognize whether you've been called or not and whether you're doing what you're doing to get by or is that the thing that God has called you to do because if you're doing what you're doing to get by you are wasting your time and God's time uh, now I'm gonna pull in some biblical help lest I 
let's eisegete the text. I'm going to pull in some biblical help so that you all will stay with me. You don't mind if I call the roll today. Let me start by calling on Moses because sometimes the call of God, or Noah rather, because sometimes the call of God looks like Noah. Noah was called by God to solve a problem that no one else understood. Building something, building an ark in a desert place that no one had ever done. Sometimes the call of God look, lo, looks like Moses. Who, when God called, when he experienced God, it was through a burning bush. When the bush took on vocal propensity and started talking to, de, to, to Moses and he became, and gave him his calling to be the leader of a nation. Sometimes the calling looks like David who hears God call him through the voice of the enemy. You will remember that when he went down to feed his brothers, he heard Goliath spouting out and trying to destroy God's people or trying to throw to, to hurl threats at God's people and no one was willing to do what David did and he said who is this uncircumcised Philistine and that's when he heard God's calling on his life to fight a new fight see sometimes sometimes our calling is not to fight somebody else's fight but sometimes God calls you to fight your own fight sometimes our call is like Peter when Jesus Jesus said come on and go with me sometimes our call is like Stephen where the people voted and put him in office and made him a leader sometimes our call is like Paul when you're not living right you're not fit fit to live and not ready to die but God calls you from among your sin and said come on and walk with me come on and talk with me and if the truth be told all of us didn't find God between two pews but God found us in a nightclub God found us in some in some alley God found us on the outside and brought us on the inside and is there anybody here who can say God I thank you you found me where I was but you brought me where I am now this ain't the time to be sophisticated this is the time you take your halo off glow and say God I thank you I could have been dead and gone but you bless me anyhow you look beyond my faults anyhow you brought me back you brought me through and you brought me out uh, did he do it for you did he do it for you did he do it for you you were out there living like Jill Scott like it was golden golden but did he do it for you uh, God uses God uses God uses all kinds of methods in order to call us but I'm glad God called us I'm glad God chose us I'm glad God has been good to us and all of us have a testimony that God called us. But then the second thing, the second thing to come out of the text, because first God takes us. Somebody shout, he takes us. Uh-oh, somebody fell asleep on me. I got to come get you again. But then secondly, he blesses us. Somebody shout, he blesses us. Now, that's the part where church folk ought to at least smile. He blesses us. Anybody glad he's still in the blessing business? Anybody glad he didn't stop 2,000 years ago, but he's still in the blessing business? I need somebody who doesn't mind celebrating the fact that God is still in the blessing business. That's how you got here today, because he's still in the blessing business. That's how you had heat last night, because he's still in the blessing business. That's why you didn't fall to your own sin, because he's still in the blessing business. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder today, is there anybody grateful that God is still in the blessing business? Now, now I need to teach this thing. I need to teach this thing because, uh, Sister Kim, in order to understand this, you got to understand what this blessing was about. This blessing was God's way of anointing the bread. He blessed the bread. The, ble the, br the implication is he anointed the bread. What is the anointing? I'm glad you asked. The anointing is the power of God over your life to bring about his appointed purpose. Uh, it, it, it's what Jesus said when he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To, he has set, sent me rather to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captive and the recovering of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptance 
acceptable year of the Lord. In other words, God's anointing means when God calls you, he gives you the power to do the thing that God has called you to do. Can I go a little deeper? 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 If you sitting here and you don't have the anointing, I can't speak for you. But if you're sitting here with the anointing, you know that's what got you through what you've been through. If you're sitting here with the anointing, you know there were times when you wanted to give up, but something said keep on moving. You know there were times when you wanted to walk away, but something said keep on stepping. Is there anybody grateful that you got the anointing of God over your life? Is it? I need six of you who can celebrate the fact that you've got God's anointing over your life. You couldn't have made it by yourself. You couldn't have come out by yourself, but there was something over you that gave you strength to keep on pressing your way through. See, there were times, there were times in your life when you felt like walking away, but you found strength to keep on pressing. And you look back over your situation and you said, look at God. Anybody ever had a look at God moment? Ah, you had a Marvin Sapp moment where you said, I never could have made it. I never should have made it. But look what the Lord has done for me. Is there anybody here who can say, I'm so grateful today that I've got God's anointing. Anybody got his anointing today? Anybody grateful for his anointing today? Now, Jesus anointed the bread. Now, you got to know, you got to know, you got to know that the bread doesn't just show up as a loaf of bread. No, that bread got to go through something to become bread. I, I, I mean, if it's by itself, before it becomes bread, it, you got some butter, you got some, you got some vegetable oil, you got some flour, you got some yeast, you got some wheat. That, but if you just put that on a counter or put that in an oven, that, that you, you're not gonna get much. But if you put it all together and put it in the oven, put it through some heat. Anybody ever felt like you've been in some heat? Anybody ever felt like you've been in the fire? Anybody ever felt like you've been in a storm? Anybody ever felt? And so it's when those ingredients come together. Together, and they began to go through the fire, the fire, the anointing. Once they get in to the fire and once the anointing gets over them, that's when they start to rise a little bit. Now in the bread is the yeast, but in you and me is the power of the Holy Ghost. And I wonder, is there anybody here who can say, I'm ready for elevation. I'm ready for the next level. I'm ready for my next blessing. I'm ready for my next venture. I'm ready for my next shout. I'm ready for my next hallelujah. I'm ready for the next level. So God put your anointing on me because if you put your anointing on me, I feel like I'm going somewhere. If you put your anointing on me, I can keep on keeping on. If you put your anointing on me, is there anybody here who can say anoint me Lord so I can walk right. Anoint me Lord so I can talk right. Anoint me Lord so I don't stay out too late anoint me Lord so I can put the bottle down anoint me Lord so I can stop smoking so much anoint me Lord so I can stop cussing so much uh, y'all don't get quiet now somebody shout anoint me Lord it's when it's when it's when the anointing shows up that you got power that you didn't have before and when you see me preaching on Sundays, I'm not preaching in my own power. I'm not speaking from my own strength or from my own voice. But by myself, I'm nothing but a fickle, fallible individual. But when the Holy Ghost shows up, he turns everything around. Can I get a witness here? Is there anybody grateful for the power of the Holy Ghost? Power of the Holy Ghost? That's how, that's how you get strength to make it on your job. That's how you get strength to deal with some knuckleheads. That's how you get strength to get on folk who get on your last sanctified reserve nerve. You need the anointing. So he, he took the bread. He blessed the bread. But then he broke the bread. 
Now, I don't want you to freeze up your amen. I don't want you to freeze up your amen. But sometimes God has to break us in order to make us. Can I get six witnesses here? Now, often, often we want to change the narrative or, or the process because we don't want to go through the process. We love, we love, we live in a microwave generation where you can just shortcut everything. But you can't shortcut your way into all of your blessings. You can't shortcut your way into your, all of your miracles. You can't shortcut your way into all of your breakthroughs. Sometimes you've got to be broken to get that thing that God has for you. You can't usurp the process. You, you can't make unilateral decisions in order for you to get your way and get the process to work out the way you want it to. No, you got to go through the process because we want God to break some things down in our lives because when God breaks it, seems like it comes together better after than it was before. Uh, we love, we love to change the narrative, but you got to go through the process because after all, we cannot reduce the process to our level. So he breaks the bread and somebody's having a rough time in this season of your life. You're having a rough time bouncing back from some things. You're having a rough time bouncing back from the doctor's report. You're having a hard time bouncing back from the death. You're having a hard time bouncing back from the termination letter. You're having a hard time bouncing back from the divorce but I want to tell you it cannot it may break you but you can still be put back together again can I get a witness in this place you do know that there are some people if they don't address their brokenness they will try to break other people be honest with yourself have you ever seen happy people turn other people unhappy no it just don't work like that it's unhappy people who go around sowing seeds because they're unhappy they try to make other people unhappy you know some people like that in your life that you do know misery loves company you do know the folk who can't stand themselves uh, what makes you think they're gonna be able to stand you uh, and you do know you do know that there are some people who don't understand why you have joy they don't understand why you keep smiling but they don't know that you've been broken but God put you back together and my brothers and sisters once he puts you back together you can shout because you can say I'm too anointed to be disappointed I'm too anointed to let you have my joy. I'm too anointed to let you have my smile. I'm too anointed to let you steal my song. I'm too anointed to let you have my increase. I'm too anointed to let you have my elevation. I'm too an God has been too good to me for me to give up right in through here. No, I'm too anointed to let the devil have my victory. He took the bread. He blessed the bread. Then he broke the bread, but then finally he gave out the bread or he passed the bread. He gave out the bread or he passed the bread. Once God has brought you back from some things, that's when you can really walk in purpose. And you don't have to tell God who and what you're going to serve. Can I tell you what's not in this text? Notice what you don't see in this text is the bread telling Jesus where he want, where the bread wants to go. You don't see the bread saying, no, put me in Judas's hands or put me in Bartholomew's hands or put me in, put me in James or John's hands. But the bread did not decide where the bread was going to go. Because the bread's job was not to decide where the bread was going to go. But the bread's job was to go where God told the bread to go. I'm through today. But I want to tell somebody, quit trying to tell God where you got to go. And let God be your leader. Let God be your shepherd. Let God be your guide. Because where God guides, God will provide. Can I get a witness here? God sends the bread. God sends the bread where God wants the bread to go. And now you got to understand this thing. It was after this moment well, that Jesus went on to the garden called Gethsemane. And when he was in Gethsemane, that's when he had to grapple with the process. While he was in Gethsemane, he said, Lord, do I really have to do this? While he was in Gethsemane, 
he had to wrestle with the process. It's getting hot in here. While he was in Gethsemane, he had to wrestle with his calling. While he was in Gethsemane, he had to wrestle with his future. But it was, all, but it was just part of the process. And finally he said, after he wrestled a little while, after he went back and forth, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm happy today. Now, I'm not just happy because he fed the 5,000. I'm not just happy today because he healed the sick. I'm not just happy today because he raised the dead. I'm not just happy today because he took a crooked woman and helped her to stand up. I'm not just happy today because he took a woman who had an issue of blood for a number of years and he stopped her bleeding. I'm not just happy today because he can do all things, but I'm happy today because while he was in Gethsemane, he got a clear understanding that he won't, that he said, and he left there saying, I ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I ain't gonna let nobody steal my joy. I ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I ain't gonna let nobody. I'm gonna wait right here. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He said, I'm gonna wait because when you wait on the Lord and be of good courage, he will strengthen your heart. He said, I'm gonna wait, be still and know that he is God. He said, I'm gonna wait because weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Somebody ought to bless him because morning is coming. Somebody ought to bless him because morning is coming. Somebody ought to bless him because morning is coming. Somebody ought to bless him because elevation is coming. Somebody ought to bless him because the tears are turning to a testimony. The sorrow is turning to joy. Say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes. Find somebody and say, it's going to be all right. You got to trust the process. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody know everything is going to be all right? Anybody know everything? Everything is going to be all right. You know, one of the worst things we can do is throw away the hymn, no. I know we love this praise and worship, and I love it too. But sometimes you got to go back and get one of those old hymns. Y'all don't mind if I go get an old hymn, do you? Be not dismayed. What advertise? God will. God will. God will. God will. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abides. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will, he will, he will take care of you. Hallelujah. Everybody standing in this sanctuary. Yeah. 
sanctuary today and you've not given your life to Christ, I invite you to come right now. The doors of the church are open. If you're here today and you tried it your way, but you found out your way isn't working and you want to try it God's way, why don't you come now and give the preacher your hand, but give the Lord your heart. you to come now the doors of the church are open God is waiting on you but then there may be somebody here and you're saying preacher I've given my life to Christ but I don't have a church home come on let's give God praise while they come come on let's give God praise while they come through every day or all or all the way today God is patiently waiting on you I know we often say I'll wait till next Sunday tomorrow is not promised to any of us if you're here I encourage you to come right now while the doors of the church are open God is patiently waiting on you Switch. I want to switch. I want you to go, go into a different hymn. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on. Let me ask you a very important question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died and rose that you might have a right to the tree of life? You believe that? Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise in this house. Wherever you are, stretch forth your hands towards this altar, wherever you are. God, we come right now in the name of Jesus. God, I don't know what our dear sister is requesting prayer for, but what I know and believe is that you can hear and answer prayer. 
You know all about her situation. After all, you know the very...